Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. This is the Albany, Washington, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This is the third most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with 19 votes. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see tested and will it off-road by clicking on the link in the description down below. So, I always make a point uh, to clarify whenever a car is not fully upgraded, and well, this is one of them. I used to own an Albany, Washington way back in the day. Well, actually, it wasn't all that long ago. Uh, essentially, when the executive garages came out and I expanded my Albany collection, I thought I had room for the Washington, one of my 10-car garages, and it turns out I didn't. So I got rid of the Washington, but then I forgot to take it off the voting list, and, well, it appeared with many, many votes. So I uh, stole one off the street threw 100% armor on it, and that's it. That is the only upgrade that this car has. So no performance upgrades, no suspension upgrade, nothing to make it go faster and handle better at all. And hopefully in a few minutes when we do the damage descent, it doesn't blow up. It shouldn't since it has 100% armor, but, you know, doesn't have insurance, so uh, might have to get a second one of these. Um, so, yeah, because of the lack of performance upgrades, we're not going to see the best time. In fact, uh, you can hear the transmission really struggling to stay in the right gear. I think had it been upgraded and had this thing had an Engine 4 mod on it, we wouldn't be seeing this problem right here because it would have had enough oomph to keep going. Uh, it probably would have been going at a higher speed, too. And it's not a slouch of a car. I mean, it's not fast, but... It's not pathetic either. Uh, so it, it's a bit unfortunate that this one's not fully upgraded, but, you know, it is what it is. But there we go. Finally got up past that point. And continuing to try to move forward, my foot is all the way down to the floor on the gas pedal. And I tried not to hit the hiker because I was afraid it would just stop me dead in my tracks. It's a beautiful sunrise, though. Man, this car is not in a hurry whatsoever. Just kind of a nice, wafting, leisurely pace. But hey, you know what? It's a luxury sedan, so I guess we don't have to expect it to get in a hurry. It's because of its lack of power. There's no challenge as far as any of the handling or anything is concerned. The back end staying nice and line. Every once in a while, the wheels do spin. Uh, but that's more about a traction issue when it's going up a really steep part of the hill than it is anything else. But you can hear the transmission is really struggling. Not only does it struggle to stay in gear, but it loses a lot of RPMs and so therefore a lot of power every time it shifts gears. So without a transmission upgrade, it takes longer for the gears to shift in GTA. I bet you didn't know that. Actually, you probably did. But here we are coming up on the three minute mark already, so it's not going to be the best time ever. Uh, that's kind of the, the breaking point of where we separate the best from everything else, is that right around three minute sweet spot. And well, we've still got quite a ways to go in the old Washington, as it just continues to lumber and climb its way up. It's doing alright through this section though, it's maintaining a good steady pace which is always nice to see the uh, stretch of humor which is based on this car didn't even make it up the mountain so since this is lighter than the stretch and you know a good 10 feet shorter uh, it, 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 it's doing a lot better much much better even managed to get a little bit of air back there so we're gonna come up to the final really steep really slippery bit here I'm gonna try to get up this section but I don't think it's gonna make it so I'm just going to go ahead and back up so I can get a good run up to it and hopefully power right up that hill there. Coming at four minutes now. Come on, baby. You can make it. There we go. We're up over the last bit of rocks and to the top of the mountain. Four minutes, 11 seconds. Will the Washington off-road? Yeah, it'll do it. I, I wouldn't really recommend it, but... It will do it. But that means we now want to see how it does in a controlled descent. Uh, again, uh, braking comes into play a lot on this, and this car does not have any upgrades on the brakes either. 
Because, well, I just didn't spend... Uh, Finn likes... Okay, I can English. I just did not feel like spending the money on any upgrades on a car that I was just going to turn around and immediately get rid of. And I did. I I don't think this is parked in any of my garages anywhere. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Can't tell which character I'm on. It looks like my second character. So, uh, yeah. It could be parked in one of his garages since he's a lot of, has a lot of extra free space. But I don't believe that it is. I'm pretty sure I went straight to uh, Beakers and, and sold it. Damage and all. And believe me. And you see this thing on the damage is saying, oh my god. So it's doing alright though, uh, mainly because it can't get a lot of speed. There's been several parts to here where I've been full throttle, believe it or not. I normally don't do that on the controlled descent. But this car it doesn't really matter because it can't go all that fast. Does alright on the jumps, gets a little bit uh, squirrely there. But that was more about going over the jumps, uh, not quite straight than anything else. But it, it's suspension soaks up the bumps nicely. Coming up to another big jump. Really front heavy, and then it bounced a lot on the landing. And right into a hiker, but the hiker lived. Whoa, sideways in another jump, almost off the side of the mountain. Complete 360 that I recovered from quite well, I have to say. Trying to shave off a little bit of the speed before this last jump here, and... Again, really front heavy, really kind of ugly on that landing. So I wonder if suspension has a lot to do with the landings on these. Might be something I want to put to the test. Take the same car and run it on all the different suspension types and see uh, how it does on jumps. Not necessarily on the mountains, just in general. I know the suspension does affect the turning radius of the car quite a bit. Uh, which a lot of people put their cars on competition suspension and mess up their turning radius. Sport is the sweet spot. That's where you want your cars. It's on sport suspension. Competition just ruins your turning radius. So we're back down on asphalt with the Washington as it protests going around a corner. Coming up to our last little stretch here. And we are down in a very long two minutes. 39 seconds. So let's go back to the top of Mount Chiliad, fling this thing off the side of the mountain, and pretty got it doesn't blow up. Nice uh, composed first jump there, but trying to keep it flat and almost succeeded. Managed to rip off a fender and do some significant body damage already. This thing is just shedding parts left and right. Look at that. We've got already a nice avalanche of body parts following us down. About to have a couple more join us as we lose the door. There's our fender slamming into the windshield, or well, the windshield used to be, because it's already busted out. Oh, nice big hit there. I think we managed to lose something else there, maybe the hood? I don't know. I just see lots of metal flying down the hill with the car. I always like racing the body parts. See who gets to the bottom of the hill first. That fender is giving me a run for my money, but I'm ahead! I've beaten the fender, hell yeah. Man, look at this car. It is just beat up. Oh, and a tiniest bit of engine rattle coming out of there. Not anything huge, but oh, there's my hood. Not anything huge, but it is a it's it's faint. I don't know how well it'll come across in the video. Oh, managed to nail the, the tunnel there. That did some good damage to it. Definitely didn't ha help the engine out whatsoever. And if you think the back end of this thing looks bad, wait till you see the front at the very end and get a good look at it. It's, oh man, this thing is beat up. It did all right to that really mump, uh, mumpy, there I go again, the bumpy muddy bits. It did really, really well. I, I gotta hand it to it. But we are down for our damage descent in 1 minute 52 seconds. And let's take a look at the damage. It's so much I had to shrink the font down. All the lights, windows, most of the doors are gone. The hood, the front bumper, the fenders, and the trunk are gone. Has bent wheels, severe body damage, and some minor uh, engine damage. 
But that brings us to our next vehicle. Another weird one, and this one's going to be quick, trust me. The Speedophile Sea Shark coming in with 27 votes. I have to agree with that lady. This is not good. It's also an automatic DNF because it cannot get to the start line under its own power. I used a cargo bob to get it to here from my yacht. And well, yeah. So I used that same cargo bob to take it to the top of Mount Chiliad. Asked uh, my buddy Blade to give me a slight little nudge just to see how it does on a damage descent. Because why not? Listen to the engine go since it's moving. I, I love the way engines work in this game. Motion equals noise whether the engine's doing anything or not. And I'm just trying to bounce it around so to keep moving. But I don't really have any hope that this thing's going to make it all the way down. In fact, well, that's as far as we get. So that's it for the Sea Shark. Very quick, odd, quirky part. But that brings us to our final vehicle, the Benefactor Shafter V12. Coming in with 55 votes. The top most voted for vehicle this week. Do not forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see tested in Willard Off-Road by hitting up that link in the description down below. Oh, listen to that exhaust sound. Love this car. Absolutely love, love, love this car. And unlike the Sea Shark, which couldn't make it, and the Albany, which didn't have upgrades, this thing is fully upgraded. Uh, this is my personal car, as you can tell by the plate. I love it. I... Uh, you know, it's supposed to represent, you know, an AMG Mercedes, which I have had the pleasure to drive an AMG Black before, and they are wicked, insane cars. And, well, this is no exception. I have to be very careful on the throttle because it does like to light up its back wheels, especially in the dirt. You can see it there, just the tiniest little blip of the throttle caused it to start spinning and the back end wanted to come around on me. So i got to be very careful, but the good thing is... That means we're going to have a lot of speed to carry up this mountain whenever I want it. You can hear it just constantly struggling for traction in the dirt, though. Just has a lot of torque, a lot of power in this car, and it doesn't want to put it down in the dirt. It just doesn't have the grip. Even here, the wheels are spinning a little bit. I was only about uh, two-thirds full throttle coming up through there. It was pretty effortless to do, but I still had to be very careful in doing it. And again, a lot of wheel spin. And that's going to be the story for this climb. The car handles really well once you keep the back end in line. Uh, you know, it's a shafter, and I've always loved the shafter. You know, it's been the best sedan in the game forever. Even though this particular shafter is technically in the sports category, it can be raced uh, in sedans now as well. And what a lot of people don't realize is this is the fastest sports car in the game in terms of top speed which is kind of impressive trying to find my grip here finally found it that cost us a lot of time though some of these cars that have just a lot of low end torque don't get the best times despite the fact that they are actually pretty quick cars when they're down on the asphalt where they belong uh, and this is going to be true for the shafter. I really think if it was capable of putting down the traction a little bit better, maybe if it was uh, all-wheel drive, it could put down the power a little bit better. But because it's just rear-wheel drive, it just winds up spinning a lot. I just cannot get the speed that I'd really like to have. Because I don't want to start going backwards because the wheels are spinning, and I also don't want the wheels to spin me around in the middle of one of the turns, especially on these narrower bits. So we're not going to get a three minute time out of this, which is unfortunate. I was really hoping that it would. Because honestly, it, it's one of my favorite benefactors. But we're nearing the top. That torque may become a problem once again as we try to climb this really steep bit here. Yeah, it just it, it's struggling to find a place that can put the power down. So I am going to have to back up and get some speed going. I'm going to try it from here. And that wound up just costing me a lot of time. Shouldn't have done it. I should have just backed on up and gotten a lot of speed, which I'm going to do now. 
But, you know, it could be that I've got two of the people in my car, even though in GTA, passengers do not add weight. They do not slow down your car. There we go. Now we're climbing. And we are going to go up and over the last bit of rocks. And we are up 3 minutes, 43 seconds. Will the Shafter V12 off-road? Yeah. About the best time. Actually makes it the 17th most uh, quick uh, sports car up the side of Mount Gilead. But now it is time for a controlled descent as Taco's timed out of the lobby. And I don't know what happened to his zombie. That's what we call uh, people's characters when they leave and they start running around. They're zombies because they have no brains. But we're going to assume he tumbled to his death down the side of the mountain. Because he was there in, in the bit of the video that I edited out. Because I had the camera pointed in his direction because I was trying to get him to get back in the damn car. So he didn't get stranded on the top. But uh, he didn't do it and then lagged out. So whatever. I don't know if he lagged out or timed out. Not really sure. For the control descent, I'm mainly just flipping the throttle just a little bit, very gently, every once in a while to keep it moving forward. Other than that, I'm letting gravity do its thing and just getting on the brakes when I need to. Don't have to use the brakes too heavy, though, because, well, the car wants to just go forward. Love this car. Beautiful color, beautiful design. Love it. One of my favorite cars in the game. Doesn't make the top five, but it's probably in the top ten, and if not the top ten, it's definitely in my top three. And it makes such a nice noise under engine braking. But there's nothing really that stands out about the control descent. I mean, right there, you can see the back end came around a little bit, just because I get a little too heavy on the throttle coming around that corner. Nice and flat on the jumps, though it does want to kick up its front end. Uh, once it's back down, it's like that the, the energy doesn't get absorbed properly. You see there again, that front end kicked up just a little bit as the car landed. But if you're aware it's going to do it, which I am because I drive this car a lot, then you know what to expect. Much better on that one as I get money for being a good boy. I must have had the HUD turned off since my money didn't pop up on this one. I recorded this weeks and weeks ago. We've actually got uh, one more week's worth of videos that are already recorded, and then I've got to start recording again. Though the vehicle that currently is sitting with the most votes overall, once again, uh, Tacos Potatoes, had nothing better to do one evening and voted for something over and over again. You'll see in a few weeks. Uh, but I've actually already got that one recorded. Uh, it's something I did a long time ago. Uh, so that footage is already done, but I'll do another round of recording probably next week. Actually, by the time this video goes live, I will have probably already done it. But we're back down on the asphalt where this car is really at home. Coming up to our final stretch here, and we are down. Two minutes, 39 seconds. So, once again, to the top of Mount Chiliad, we go to drive off the side and see what type of damage this thing can take. And even though this car was added in one of the more recent DLCs, um... Which one was it? Executives and Other Criminals? I'm pretty sure it's added in Executives and Other Criminals. I could be wrong on that, though. Um, it is still based on the model of the original Shafter. It just gets some extra bits and a different engine sound and obviously different handling data. But because it's based on a car that was in the game from launch, it takes damage, except for the bits that are different from the regular Shafter. And they miraculously aren't damaged, which is, you know, go figure. Already, speaking of damage, I'm hearing a bit of an engine rattle, which is, oh, and I'm seeing a rocket appear out of nowhere. Holy crap, rocket just ran over us in his uh, big, massive truck. Not going to be the only time he does it. Looks like he's struggling a bit there. I'll help him out of the way. But yeah, speaking of damage, the engine is uh, damaged a little bit, which is something... That happens with all the shafters, even the uh, turret of Bilbo. They take engine damage really quick. So, yep, hit the bridge. Because, of course, I did. Let's see how we do through this bumpy, muddy bit here. Uh, not the best. Roundup flipping over and, oh, got nailed by a truck so hard. It took a little bit of my health. And it's making it hard to get the car off that little ledge. There, kind of finally let go. 
That hood, look at it. It won't do anything but stick up until it finally flies off. He smashed that hood. Because of all the power, the car is sliding all around. I just cannot keep it going in anything is simply in a straight line. There's that engine rattle again. Smack the wood pile as we come up. But we are up. We're down. In one minute, 53 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the shaft of V12. All the lights and most of the windows are gone. The hood, the right front door is gone. And pit wheels, severe body damage, and some modern engine damage. Hey, don't forget to vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in the Wheel It Off Road. And until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.